All right, this is Big Picture Anatomy with a look at liver function. First, we're going to take a look at the liver in place in the body and why it has a dual blood supply. And then we're going to take a look at the microscopic stru structure within the liver and how the cells work on that dual blood supply. So zooming in on the liver's place in the body, what we can see is that, of course, we have our gut tract with the esophagus leading to that J-shaped stomach, the sea of the duodenum, and then the big ball of the rest of the small intestines, and the liver coming off of the sea of the duodenum, duodenum attached to it by the common bile duct and the liver itself. The liver, like any organ, needs a supply of oxygenated blood, which is going to come from the left side of the heart, the aortic arch, arching back and forming the dorsal aorta down the dorsal part of the abdominal cavity after the aorta passes through the diaphragm from the chest region into the abdominal region. And the first artery off of the aorta in the abdominal cavity is going to be that celiac artery coming down, dividing into a few different arteries, including the hepatic artery, which is going to go to the liver and supply it with oxygenated blood coming directly from the left side of the heart. On the other hand, to do its job, the liver also needs a supply of blood that's going to come from the guts, from the intestines, actually the stomach and duodenum as well, but we're just focusing on the rest of the intestines here, where you're going to have an initial supply of blood to the intestines going through the superior mesenteric artery and going out to the intestines and that blood's going to go to capillaries in the intestines where it's going to pick up nutrients, possibly toxins as if there's any of that in what we've taken into our um, gut. Or, and then um, that same blood supply to the intestines is going to give up its oxygen. However, in order to not send that nutrient-rich and potentially toxin-laden blood back to the rest of the body directly, it goes through what's called the hepatic portal vein, not a regular vein, a portal vein to the liver where it is going to join the oxygenated blood and go to the capillaries of the liver and be able to have the liver function in terms of storing nutrients and removing toxins from the blood. Then, that combined blood from the hepatic artery, the hepatic portal vein, after going through the liver's capillaries, will all reunite and go back to the heart through the hepatic vein, which is going to join the inferior vena cava, coming from the rest of the inferior part of the body, and back to, of course, the right side of the heart, and out to the lungs to pick up oxygen again. All right, now let's take a look at what happens to that blood in the liver at the cellular level by magnifying that up to the microscopic level and looking at what we call a lobule of the liver. If we zoom in on the lobule, here's what we're going to see. The liver has a very typical look to it, the unmistakable in the microscope with these almost geometric looking hexagonal lobules. And what you see in each lobule of the liver in the corner is what we call a triad a triad of vessels, which include branches of that hepatic portal vein or the hepatic venule, a branch of the hepatic artery or hepatic arterial, and a branch of the bile duct. In the center of the liver, what we're going to see is what's called the central vein. So from the corner, so, from the corner each corner of, of the each triad, Eat of the from liver the lobule triads that are in each blood. From what happens is the blood the that's coming hepatic, in from the hepatic portal venule and from the hepatic artery or arterial mix as they enter into these very specialized liver capillaries that are called sinusoids. And as that blood mixes, of course, it provides oxygenated blood from the hepatic artery to those cells, but it also provides that nutrient rich and potentially toxin laden blood to the hepatocytes, which are the liver cells which are surrounding the sinusoids. They're lining the outside of the sinusoids. And they are now able to do their incredible metabolic magic on those um, on the blood that's coming through there that's come from the small intestines. They're able to temporarily store any nutrients. They're able to remove any toxins. And at the same time, they're able to create the bile 
which then flows back through a series of tiny little canaliculi. I haven't drawn them in because it just gets confusing, but tiny little canals back to the final member of the triad, the bile ductile, and all of those bile ductiles come together from all the lobules of liver, the liver and converge into the um, hepatic duct or the duct that carries bile to the gallbladder. So just to recap, what we have in the liver is a dual blood supply where you've got oxygenated blood coming through the from the aorta through the celiac artery to provide oxygen to all the cells. But then that supply of blood, which has first been to the small intestines and the rest of the gut, to be honest, and comes through what's called the hepatic portal vein and is laden with nutrients as well as potential toxins. Those two, two blood supplies in the lobule of the liver then mix um, in each corner of the lobule where you get um, blood coming from the hepatic arterioles and the hepatic venules traveling through these very special capillaries at the microscopic level, the liver sinusoids, where the hepatic cells are able to do their principal role of either storing nutrients, removing toxins, or producing bile. The bile travels through tiny canaliculi back to the third member of the triad, the bile duct, where it all converges and, of course, comes back together to do what? To produce the bile which is then carried through, temporarily stored in the bile duct, I haven't in the gallbladder, I haven't drawn that, but then sent back to the duodenum through the common, common bile duct. That then is the story of liver function from big picture anatomy.